Nice. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, our second rule of the day now covers four items. As we discussed earlier, the first item is a bill to ban imports of Russian oil into the United States and to impose additional sanctions following Russia's unprovoked and unjust invasion of Ukraine. Although I will be supporting this bill, it's a missed opportunity to exhibit unified support for the immediate steps to confront Vladimir Putin's evil empire. Uh, a much stronger bill has been introduced in the Senate that was negotiated over the weekend by Republicans and Democrats in the House and Senate. Why the majority would forego taking yes for an answer and instead introduce a much weaker watered-down bill is beyond me. Our second bill is an omnibus appropriations bill covering the remainder of fiscal year 2022. Our third bill is a short-term continuing resolution to ensure the continuity of government funding while Congress finishes the larger bill. And our fourth is a $15 billion standalone COVID supplemental. The omnibus appropriations bill was a long time in coming. Uh, indeed, we are over five months into fiscal year 2022, and it's more than a little frustrating that it's taken us this long to get here. But we are here now, and the bill before us represents a realistic compromise between the House and the Senate and between Democrats and Republicans. The omnibus bill is far, far better than the partisan bills the House passed last summer. This bill preserves the historic legacy by partisan pro-life writers like the Hyde Amendment and the Weldon Amendment, both of which absolutely had to be in this package in order to become law. It omits new, part it omits new partisan policy writers in which there is no uh, consensus. It increases defense spending by more than $25 billion over the last year, which is clearly necessary in the wake of Vladimir Putin's unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. And it provides for an appropriate measured increase in non-defense spending, which will allow for continued investments in programs like the National Institutes of Health, ARPA-H, TRIO, and GEARA. The limited uh, increase in non-defense spending allows us to make responsible investments in key programs uh, while being good stewards of taxpayer dollars. While it spends more than I would have preferred, it's still a very reasonable compromise. Before I conclude, I want to once again congratulate Chairwoman Rosa DeLore and Ranking Member Kay Granger of the Appropriations Committee on today's bill and thank them for their hard work. Uh, on the new addition, the $15 billion COVID supplemental, I think there are serious concerns with this additional unpaid for increase. According to the CBO, there are currently more than $340 billion in unobligated funds available for repurposing and appropriation. Indeed, uh, instead of providing new resources like this bill does, we should rescind or repurpose existing COVID resources for these purposes, like the bill we considered earlier today would have done. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen.